By the way, did you? You just worked um, pretty mischievous for Brendan Walsh for the Kentucky Oaks. Talk about the work. I thought it was a nice move. Uh, we saw a couple of links off our workmate. Uh, she relaxed beautifully, and I just kind of let her out little by little down the lane. She picked it up great. Good, strong gallop out, so I was very pleased uh, pulling out. Talk about her and what kind of trait she has leading into the Kentucky Oaks. That you know, she, she always puts herself in a great position. She travels well against a bit. She, she's got a nice turn of foot, so if all goes well, uh, we just need a little bit of racing luck. I think we're well capable. So you ride verifying in the Kentucky Derby. Talk about his last race. That had to be a tough beat there. It was, but, uh, you know, we took away a lot of positives. He stepped up big time. Uh, good true test at round two turns against a quality field. He held his own. Uh, you know, he's still a young horse. He's still learning. His pedigree says he'll run all day, so we're hoping to see the best of him the is, first Saturday of May. Is it too soon to suggest that you're going to be out on the lead and trying to wire this thing with him because he yeah. looks like it's him and maybe Dermot Sotogaki who are the lone speed. Right, you know, looking at the form, like you said, there's not a whole lot of uh, blistering speed out front, so I'll definitely speak with Brad and figure out a game plan from there. Obviously, you're fine after going down in the race the other day. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's very fortunate to still be young. Uh, woke up pretty, feeling pretty good uh, yesterday, so that was a good sign. In, in, in terms of verifying as well, you know, when you I, it, have you looked at this enough to say, Geez, you know, I got to be aware of Dermis Otakake and not get sucked into a speed duel. I mean, have you have you gone into it and looked at it enough to even start to formulate that? Obviously, we've looked it over. Uh, you you want to have an idea before anything. Uh, just try and figure out who the main players are that are going to be there early, and uh, we'll wait to see how the draw lays out and kind of figure out our game plan from there. Did you feel like there was a lot of course left despite the effort that had to go into finishing second in the bluegrass? No, and that's what I told Brad. He, he really didn't give me everything until that horse came up and headed him. When that uh, tap it thrice, when he put a head in front, my horse re-engaged, and I felt like there was more there. Yeah, and, and to that extent, I mean, getting that extra eighth of a mile, I, that provided you that optimism, I take it? Yes, and the way he galloped out, and to me, it just kind of seemed like he got lost by himself when he made the lead. We made it pretty easy under, under a pretty easy hold, so he might have just got there too easily. How much of that is just the experience of the horse and gaining experience? You know, his first tr true two-turn test against yeah. that kind of in that kind of scenario uh, was in the Rebel, and he didn't really get much chance to run down the lane. Just the spot never opened up for him. So the other day, seeing him respond that way it was very, a big positive. If you weren't confident in verifying, would you be confident in that you have a chance after last year that, that anything can happen? You know, it's a derby. Uh, the favorite hardly ever wins, so as long as you're in the race, you got a chance. It seems like it changes every year. You know, 20 horses, you're going to get a different result every time you run it, so it's just hopefully it's our year.